So Google just released their new Gemini models and honestly, they're insanely fast and insanely cheap. So we're going to be testing out all three of the new models, which include the Flash, the Flash Lite, and of course, the Gemini 2 Pro model. Now let's see how they actually perform when it comes to reasoning prompts and coding prompts and if the speed of these models is actually worth it or not. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out and ensures you won't miss any of the cool tools and tips we've got coming your way. So, Google has just released their new Gemini 2.0 models and there are some really exciting updates. The Gemini 2.0 Flash model, which was previously in experimental mode, is now officially available. Along with that, there's also a brand new model called Flash Lite. I'll go over the pricing for these models in a bit, but for now, it's important to note that the Gemini 2.0 Pro model is still in experimental mode, so there's no official pricing for it yet. These models are incredibly powerful. They're multimodal, meaning they can handle text, images, and more. They also come with a full suite of tools, including their own browser and image generator, making them highly versatile. The biggest shift here is that Google might have moved away from NVIDIA GPUs and is now using their newly announced Trillium TPUs. This change has significantly improved inference speeds while reducing costs, which is why these models perform so well while remaining affordable. When it comes to performance, these models are extremely fast. In testing, they've been quicker than Quen 2.5 Max, DeepSeek R1, and even some models from the Grok lineup. Let's take a look at some research done by Artificial Analysis. First, we have a quality versus price quadrant. The green section represents the best balance between price and performance. As you can see, Gemini 2.0 is outperforming other models in terms of quality. Meanwhile, Gemini 2.0 Flash is priced similarly to GPT-4 Mini, delivers better performance. It even outperforms GPT-4 and 3.0. 5 Sonnet, both of which are high quality models but come at a much higher cost. Now let's talk about speed. With all these improvements, the speed jump is phenomenal. These models not only offer better quality but are also significantly faster. O3 Mini is still leading in terms of raw speed but it's not as cost effective. So, looking at the pricing chart, you can clearly see just how much cheaper the Flash and Flash Lite models are. They've even surpassed the R1 models, which previously held the title for the most affordable options. Flash Lite, in particular, is unbelievably cheap, making AI more accessible for a wide range of applications at a significantly lower cost. And the best part? It's not just about the price, it's about the value. You already saw the quality index where Gemini 2.0 flashlight outperformed GPT-4.0. Now just take a look at the price of GPT-4.0. It's still way higher in comparison, and that's not even mentioning GPT-01, which is just ridiculously expensive. Even against the base 4.0 model, flashlight delivers much better affordability while still still maintaining strong performance. Now, let's move on, and I'll show you the testing of all three new models. Okay, so the first question we have is to name a country that ends with Stan along with its capital city. I tested this on all three models. First, the Gemini 2.0 model correctly identified Uzbekistan and provided its capital city as well. Next, the flashlight model took 1.3 seconds and also correctly identified Pakistan along with its capital, Islamabad. Finally, the Pro model was even faster and also got the answer right. So, let's go ahead and mark all of these as passes. Now, moving on to the next question, it asks for a number that rhymes with the word wait. The Gemini model answered correctly in 1.4 seconds. Then, the flashlight model responded in just 0.6 seconds. Finally, the Pro model took 0.9 seconds and also provided the correct answer. In this case, the flashlight model was the fastest. So we'll go ahead and mark these as passes as well. All right, now for a more complex reasoning challenge. The next question asks for a haiku where the second letter of each word, when combined, spells black. Here's what happened. The Gemini 2 Pro model got it wrong. It spelled black using the first letters of each word instead, so it didn't follow the instructions correctly. The second model also got it wrong and, for some reason, flagged the response as not permitted due to hate or harassment. No idea why that happened. Finally, the Pro model also failed to follow the instructions. So, we'll go ahead and mark these as fails. These are more reasoning-based problems, but next, we'll see how the models handle coding prompts. Now, let's try a logic-based math question. If I start with three oranges, get three more, make juice using four of them, and then drink half the juice, how many oranges do I have left? Most people would say four, 
since the two remaining oranges are technically still present in the juice. But interestingly, after testing these AI models, they all responded with two, reasoning that drinking half the juice doesn't change the number of oranges left. For comparison, the DeepSeek model and the O3 Mini both gave the same answer. The DeepSeek model took 2.0 seconds, while the flashlight model responded in just 0.9 seconds. Finally, the Pro model also answered correctly in two seconds. Once again, the flashlight model was the fastest. So let's mark all of them as passes. Right now, I'm not seeing a big difference between the three models except in speed, with the flashlight model being extremely fast. Now, let's move on to a word-based reasoning challenge. The question involved guessing an English adjective based on certain conditions. You can pause the video if you want to read the full question, but let's jump straight to the results. The flash model was really close. It got everything right except for the condition requiring nine letters. The flashlight model, on the other hand, was way off and also failed. Surprisingly, the pro model, which I expected to perform better, also got it wrong. But since it's still in the experimental stage, mistakes like this aren't too surprising. So we'll go ahead and mark all of them as fails. All right. Our next question is another reasoning challenge. You can pause the video to read the full question, but in short, it asks how many brothers Tom has. Let's check the responses. The flash model correctly stated that there are three brothers in total. However, the actual question asked how many brothers Tom has, and the correct answer is two. Despite this slight misinterpretation, the response was technically still correct. Moving on, the flashlight model also answered correctly, and was the fastest. Finally, the pro model got it right as well, taking just one second. So let's go ahead and mark all of these as passes. Now let's try a reasoning and math question. Again, you can pause the video if you want to read the full prompt, but the correct answer here is 80. The flash model got it right, taking 1.6 seconds. Next, the flashlight model answered correctly and was the fastest taking just one second. Finally, the pro model also provided the right answer, but it took the longest. At this point, the flashlight model is looking really impressive. It's fast, inexpensive, and performs well across different question types. So we'll go ahead and mark them all as passes. Now here's where things get really interesting. We're moving into coding prompts. This next task involves generating SVG code for a butterfly. Let's check the results. The Gemini 2.0 flash model took about 11 seconds to generate the code, but yeah, this doesn't look like a butterfly at all. The output was really poor, so I'm marking this one as a fail. Next, the flashlight model was much faster, taking just 2.8 seconds. However, the result still didn't resemble a butterfly, the shapes were all messed up, and it just didn't look right. So, this one also gets a fail. Finally, we have the experimental pro model. It took around 20 seconds, which is still relatively fast. But the butterfly it generated, this is honestly one of the best AI-generated illustrations I've seen. The drawing was highly accurate and well done. So this one is definitely a pass. Next, we have another coding challenge, this time creating a 3D cube using simple web development frameworks. The flash model took 11 seconds to generate the code, and here's what it produced. The cube looks great, the movement is smooth, and while it's not interactive, it's still a solid result. The DeepSeek model did create an interactive version, but this one is still quite good. Next, the flashlight model completed the task in just five seconds, really fast. However, the result wasn't great. The cube rotates, but at times it loses its shape, likely due to issues with the parameters in the code. Because of that, I wouldn't consider it a pass. Finally, the pro model took 16 seconds and generated the exact same cube as the flash model, with no noticeable differences. So, in terms of efficiency, the flash model was the best performer here. Let's mark them accordingly. Now, let's move on to an even tougher challenge for these models. This next task involves creating a Python script that animates a ball bouncing inside a rotating square. These kinds of Pi game animations have always been difficult for AI models, so let's see how the new Gemini models handle it. First, let's check the response times. The Gemini 2.0 flash model took 12 seconds. The flashlight model was faster, finishing in just 8 seconds. And the pro model took the longest at 17 seconds. Now, let's go ahead and paste these into the code editor and see how they perform. I've opened up a Python file with Pygame installed, so let's run the first model's code. And yeah, this is clearly wrong. 
the ball is going out of bounds and the square isn't even rotating. That's a complete fail. Now let's move on to the flashlight model. I'll remove the old code, paste in the new one and run it. Okay, this is actually surprising. The ball is bouncing inside the square properly and the cube is actually rotating. This is a really nice animation, so I think we'll mark this one as a pass. Finally, let's check out the pro model. I'll copy the code, paste it here, and run it. And, yeah, even the pro model wasn't successful. The animation is completely wrong. So, when it comes to coding, at least for Pygame animations, both the flash model and the pro model failed, while the flash light model was the only one that got it right. I honestly didn't expect that result. You've seen how all three models performed. Some areas were really solid, and in others, there were definitely some disappointments. But one thing's for sure, the speed is absolutely there. The flashlight model in particular was insanely fast, and with the lower price, it's actually a great option to start using in your own AI applications. Try them out for yourself and see how they perform in your workflow. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.